Hey, how are you? I'm good. Yeah. I had a nice day. Yeah. I woke up really, really late. <laughs> Aren't we all? It was very nice. Nice. Weekend. Then what else did I do? And then I talked with Lama, and it was nice. And then I made guacamole. That was also nice. Very nice. Had, yeah, it was awesome. Like a lot of little nice things. That's good. So your your lockdown has been nice. Yeah, my lockdown. As soon as you use the word, then just like anxiety <laughs> and sadness falls. But, uh, it hasn't felt so much yet, like lockdown, because most of the time was the weekend. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like anything has changed yet. Oh really? So your life has been going uh, normally. Apparently, I don't leave the house on a regular. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Yeah. Uh, How is it for you? Uh, it's good. It's okay. You know. Uh, started to learn new things. You know, your you, the checklist for every every time you have free time, you have the the bucket list that you have to do. That's right. And for now, I only I only dropped out of like half of the things. <laughs> so that's okay. That's good for now, you know. What's on your checklist? So I'm continuing to study Arabic. And I started to learn how to play the guitar. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you know, I'm looking for more things to add. Baking. Mm. I love cooking, so maybe baking is good, yeah. Bread. The internet says that that's like what we're supposed to do. Do you bake? No. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to have more friends that do. <laughs> Why don't you start? Uh, because the oven is big and it's heavy and... You don't have like, to lift the oven. <laughs> making... I don't know. I, I feel intimidated by the failure of bread. Like... I tried once. Okay, this is why. I tried making Amis friendship bread once. What is this? It's supposed to be a really beautiful, sweet, cinnamony, soft, crunchy on top bread that the Amish are famous for, apparently. And it's supposed, like, you grow your own yeast. Yeast. You grow your yeah. own yeast. Oh my god. How you do you grow, grow yeast? You put it in a bag with flour and something else and you let it sit there for a long, long, oh, long time. Oh, machmetzet it's called? I think so. Okay, that sounds cool. I think it, some of my friends tried it. It should be cool, but my bread came out tasting like very bad beer. <laughs> that was not... <laughs> Good. <laughs> so much love into it. You have so many expectations. But you tried it only once. Try it again. Okay. Everything oh. sucks on the first time. You don't know what you're doing. Second time, you'll have a better time. I don't know. I feel like me and lasagna are very good from day one. Mm. Lasagna is considered baking, no? No, because you use noodles that are... Oh, but you use like the leaves, no? The... Mm. Okay. Okay, I know how to put things in the oven, but bread That's feels good. like a different thing. Put things in the oven is a good start, you know? Something I, you should know. Every adult should know how to put things in the oven. But not only bread is considered baking, you can make pizza or cakes, right? That's true. I made good cookies like two years ago. So you do bake? I I wouldn't consider every two myself years. a bake. Every... <laughs> every... <laughs> Yeah, every full moon, something <laughs> kind of like wakes up inside me and says, oh, put something in the oven, let it grow. Were those the, the kind of cookies that uh, 
Thank you. Hi. Oh, that was a very incriminating question. <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't. They were oatmeal mm. and chocolate chip. It sounds nothing. good. Cinnamon. They were good. Why don't you open a shop? They were good. I have a very big window. People can wait in the courtyard, and I can throw cookies down Ooh, to them. That sounds a good, like a good concept. I. This is the time to make uh, at-home business adventures. Yeah, if you catch them with your mouth straight in, like ah, uh, then you get them for free. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great marketing plot. You can take videos of people. Doing dumb stuff. Cookies? Yeah. Uh, wow. What is the name of your bakery? My. Uh, I keep trying to think of like something very clever, but all I'm getting <laughs> is like flying cookies. <laughs> Say ah. Uh, <laughs> it sounds it sounds clever because people don't expect that it will be like literally, you know. But when they come, they see, oh my god, it's actual flying cookies. I'm actually getting hit in the face by a cookie. <coughs> yeah. People are traveling from all over the world to get hit in the face with my delicious cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that on uh, Ynet or something, you know. That's a very clickbaity thing. Poor desperate students throws cookies at people for money. <laughs> <laughs> You should make them too big as well, so no one can catch them. Like make them the the size of the whole face. Oh my gosh! <laughs> to fail, just yeah. like in a what are they called? Like in carnivals, where they have those terrible games with huge animals, like stuffed animals that you can win. But the oh, point of yeah. the game is that you can't actually win. Mm, yeah, but you know. My father actually won that once. Oh, like what did he big, win? A big, uh, a big dog uh, stuffed animal, like, like in for his first his first try. Like the the, the machines that you you put uh, like a euro inside and yeah, and you catch it with a claw. So like it's his one. first try, he won something like worth like thirty euros or something. And that's Wait, it. Was it actually worth 30 euros or it usually takes people 30 euros of tries until No, we they... looked at it at the shop after. It was worth a lot, like 50 or 30, I don't know. And nobody ever catch them in those things, right? It's always it's set up for failure. It's like if, even if you catch them, you drop them at the last second, right? Like But he did it. Mm -hmm. He did it, the crazy bastard, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Dad. Yeah. Now, now he calls him Shaul, and he lives with us. The yeah. dog. Yeah. The dog. Thought... <laughs> no. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say your dad is named Shaul, and he lives with us now. <laughs> <laughs> no. We took like... the dog in our suitcase back to Israel, and now he lives with us. Wow. Yeah. Wait, where did he uh, It was win? in a, like a theme park in Rome. Me and my sister went to do actual like roller coasters and fun stuff and he he doesn't like them, so that's what he did. Uh, <laughs> that's uh... <laughs> Yeah, it turned out good, you know? We have a new family member. That's it. The more the merrier. Let's yes. see. I have I have a really large crocodile really? that I had since it used to be bigger than me. Since what? it was bigger than I was. Yes. Like a, like, like a doll? Like a stuffed like, animal? Mm-hmm. Wow. And uh and her name is Nancy. <laughs> Nancy, wow, Nancy the crocodile. Can you cuddle with her? Yeah, usually when I'm really hungover, I like put my head on Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe an emotional support, like from my childhood, like there, there, you'll be okay. Mm, that's or, good. 
Just because her belly is exactly the perfect size <laughs> between like my neck and how far away it wants to be from the bed when the world is spinning. <laughs> oh my god. Is she still like a cuddly size, like a human size, or is she very small now after you've grown? Um, I'm bigger than her, <laughs> yeah. if that's your question. I have grown. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, stuffed animal animals do not grow with us, huh? That's deep, that's sad. <laughs> Oh so, this is our podcast. Random yeah. Shit. This is what we do. Yeah. I feel like it's going good. No? Oh, I've been very, very nervous. No. I still am. Why? I don't know. Don't you feel any nervousness right now? I mean, the, like, if I stop a moment to think about, is what we're saying interesting to people who will like this? Mm. Then I'm not sure. If I think about how my voice sounds like a teenage boy, then I get like a little bit of <laughs> But I'm It doesn't. Fine. You oh. sound like a kid star, you know, like like Yuvara Mebulbal or something, like a big star that you can be like a... <laughs> not Yuvara Mebulbal, but for a girl, you know? You can okay. have a kid show. Like Pippi Longstocking or whatever. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but maybe. <laughs> uh, What? Zippy, Zippy Longs, I don't know what you call her in Hebrew, but it's like <laughs> striped tight, oh, never mind, striped okay. tights and big braids that are orange uh, hair. Uh, Bilby, no? Bilby, Pippi, yes. Okay, maybe. Maybe, could be, yeah. What was the bottle you're holding? It looks like a World War ah. I uh, medicine. Oh, that's true. You are not wrong. So you asked, uh, am I nervous? And maybe I am. This is a bottle of very nice gin. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I painted a friend's house the other day and I saw that it was left over. I said, I like that bottle. I'm going to take it with me. Uh, elderflower and rosemary. It is batch bottle number nine of 70... The blah, blah, blah. Wow, so it's really like, is it that old? Like it's very old? I don't think so. Did you uh, drink the gin out of it? Uh, not yet. I'm working on it. Oh, there is something inside? Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I'm just carrying a bottle here with me for good luck. I it's, like uh, the spirit. It's, ah, that's funny because like alcohol is also called spirits. Isn't really? it? Yeah, but I think a certain type of... Mm. Yeah, drink it. <laughs> yeah, what are your thoughts now? I just poisoned myself. <laughs> oh no. I was You're going to die on our first water. podcast? Maybe. Oh my god. Oh. So it wasn't gin, it was water, but maybe like very dusty water, moldy water. Can can someone die from drinking mold? Oh maybe. This is Don't not worry. a good start to the podcast. Maybe our think. next guest will be a doctor and we'll ask him. Mm, Zafil. Yeah, from Zafir. <laughs> Maybe he can know, you know. Mm. You're going to die. You know what? I think I'm going to ask him right now because we should be prepared for the worst. Yeah. Hello, Zafil. What happens? Zafil, I have a question. <laughs> can someone die? So asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Someone died from drinking moldy water. Asking for a friend. <laughs> If uh, anybody asks, you're that friend. Okay, I'm the friend. So, what are we going to play at your funeral? Wow, that's such a good question. You know what? Because you say that, it makes me think of this article that I saw recently. Mm, what a segue. Wow, I know, right? It was very smooth. There was a segue moment before, but I let it pass. It was so <clears throat> what, what was it? Shit, I can't go backwards now. Ah, something about like taking things into your own hands or something okay, like so that. I missed it. I, I missed the subway. Uh, right. 
you're better than me than in recognizing like good segues. This is what we're here for. To do a workshop, you know, the tech um, segue? workshop. Segways recognition. I think it's also called attention deficit disorder. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Can you teach that? <laughs> uh, how to be slightly focused. How to be focused but slightly distracted at all times. <laughs> I think so. Mm, it's, it's a good ability, you know? That's, I think it's kind of a superpower. It could also be called multitasking. Yeah, so it's a superpower. You're super Michal, actually. Oh my not god, what if Michal. it was... What if it was poison? What if it was not even moldy water? What if it was something bad? Okay. My heart is feeling tight. Don't worry, don't worry. You I just need to pick a to... song to play in the funeral and everything will be okay. I want something exciting. You need to and go out glory. in glory, you know? Something catchy. Like... Shut to the heart and you're too late. Wow. Yeah, I don't know where that really? came that's, from. <laughs> that's how you want people to remember you? That you gave love a bad name? Oh no! <laughs> okay, so speaking of segues and like funerals and stuff like that. <clears throat> yes. 94 year old study economy. Oh my god, is that their name? Okay. What study, study economy? economy. Is packed off for the sweet hereafter. His exit strategy is a little sweeter than most. That's because economy, that is actually this person's name, is going to be buried in a casket that looks like juicy fruit gum. <laughs> what? Yes. Speaking of going out with a fantastic bang. Like in Jello? No, not in jello. Like juicy fruit is a type of gum. It's okay. bright yellow. Oh, okay. so he's a veteran. He has a love affair with juicy fruit gum that goes back to his days in the oh war. God. That's like me and Mike and Ike. Oh, you like Mike and Ike? Yeah, I will go. My my casket will be a big Mike and Ike uh, package, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we did did he actually like got buried in, in this? Yeah. Wow. Can you visit his grave and like dig it up and see it? Uh, <laughs> um maybe. I don't know. You cannot go to his grave and dig him up and look at his casket. But it, like he made it a tourist attraction. Like why did he make like why did he do it? Like to to grab attention after his death, right? So he like he, he did it to himself, you know, if someone digs oh, it up. Oh he's not even dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> <laughs> his life is economy, his name is economy. His name is Sati. S U T T I E S U T T I E Suti Sati Okay Suti Economy That's his name Wait Economy is his family name his last name Economy is his family name Wow Wow So if it kind his parents, of sounds like a, if what? his parents are divorcing then the economy is crumbling <laughs> The economy family unit. Sorry, that was a bad, bad dad joke, you know? Oh, it was such a dad joke. But it was humorous. I think you got a giggle out of me. That's nice. That's always nice. So that's the story. Um, he just wants to be buried in it. He wants to be because he's known as being the guy that gives out juicy fruit. That's like the creepy guys at synagogues. That you hand know? out candy? Yeah. Oh, Maybe he's that why guy. Is, is it a creepy thing or is it just like this is how old people think you should treat people that are younger than them? Um, I don't know. When you grow up, 
and you have like you know what a pedophile is it sounds very <laughs> creepy when you when you're a little kid it doesn't matter you just take the candy and eat it but when wow when did you figure out when a, what a pedophile was wow i don't know actually just like when you grow up and everything related to you know sex is like oh my god oh, oh. Like, it's very exciting to know stuff i think it you know it all came around the same time maybe seven sixth grade oh my goodness i don't know if pedophiles like came right at the start but but i don't know how about you There is an age where you just want to figure out about the world, but you want to figure out everything that's terrible. <laughs> For some reason. Because you're cooler if you know all the secrets of the adults, right? Mm. Don't you think? Yeah. Are pedophiles the secrets of the adults, though? Mm, I think they are, no? I don't... I don't think your parents will tell you about a, a pedophile. But they do. That's why we know not to talk to people handing out candy that we don't know. Oh, you know. I... So they I do tell really... us about it. Maybe they don't say what pedophiles yeah. do. I never Explosive. really thought about it. Yeah. Mm. That uh, not, don't talk to strangers uh, like talk is related to pedophiles, actually. You're right. Yeah. Don't make I mean, sense. Is there like a, like when you were growing up, people told you like, don't talk to people you don't know? Mm, yeah, I think so. Did they say it to you? What? You're so tired, huh? You woke up like two hours ago. <laughs> But I didn't have coffee today. Oh. Uh. I know. Do you drink a lot of coffee? It happened at the, the seminar, actually. Like you wake, okay, we were waking up at like 7.40, 8 o'clock and then you have this like half asleep breakfast and then you have to talk about things that are very serious. <laughs> were you so, in the morning? All the I was time? in the morning group, yeah. Mm. Mm. You're not a morning person, I, I take. I think I'm all right in the morning. I think I'm a bit fragile. I think I'm a bit sensitive in the morning. <laughs> okay. But isn't everybody like you just you're coming from your like sleep where you weren't like all of your senses were turned off and then you wake up and yeah, your world is loud. But it can like turn it on very fast, you know? I don't know who those people are. I don't trust them. Why not? How do you just turn on so quickly? What is your secret to resting so deeply? I, I don't know. People that don't like sleeping, I don't trust. <laughs> It, they just don't have a problem waking up, you know? It doesn't mean they don't like sleeping. Do you have a problem waking up? No. I'm, I'm not like super, like super, uh, like energized in the morning, but when my alarm clock goes off, I, I came, come off the bed, you know? No. It doesn't take me any time to wake up, but I, I never... Maybe it's my my uh, Polish, German roots, Jewish, I don't know, being a yeke, you know? What is a yeke? Can you explain yeke. for the podcast? Oh. The words, I feel it's like, very... uh, I know it from my kibbutz, you know, it's like this German uh, genes that are inside of a person that, I think it's from Germany, that you're always on time, always like, If someone is late, you like make a face, I don't know, that's like, you always like respect the time, I don't know, <laughs> respect the, the way things should be, you know, if it's this time, not only in times, it's only like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Can you explain it? Yeah, can. Well, first off, for my first impression, it sounds like yuck. Now, I know it's not <coughs> yucky. Yucky. Yucky, yeah. yes. <laughs> But I think that yeke is kind of just like 
square, being like old and in a square, square, <laughs> squarish in spirit. Mm. Like, oh, you are four minutes late, so and then they you, wag their finger at you. you just call me old and square. No, you called <laughs> yourself old. <laughs> I am describing the yeke, oh, yeke yeah. pots. That's what my dad used to say. Yeke pots. So he was not a yeke. I wouldn't say my dad. <laughs> if my dad ever finds this, he would not want to be called a yeke. My dad was not a yeke. <laughs> he was a young man. Mm. Lots of energy. He is a young man. Nice. It's good to know that not all old people are yekes. No. Wow. I remember the moment where I like realized that not all old ladies are old ladies in their mind, body, and spirit. <laughs> Who like, made you realize that? It was a mix between the old ladies that had like really purple or like colored hair and not in a way where they're trying to be like trying to regain their natural hair color, but they bought really bad hair dye like it's purple in the way where it's supposed to be purple <laughs> and they're dressed like in cool jeans and cool fashion i mean no sorry not cool but they don't give a fuck kind of a way like trying to be special you know? trying to be special yeah like fashionable like they're wearing they have their nails done and they're wearing sandals and they have like a big dresses with lots of colors on them and sunglasses that are fancy and not just a big bag like other wow. old ladies in Jerusalem you know yeah. i i thought that was that was like a real thing that women go through in their life like that there is a phase between like age 40 and 50 that they cut their hair to like very short and paint it in purple or really or orange and they walk yeah. with jeans. That, that's like half of the women in my kibbutz did this, okay? I think that's menopause. <laughs> hey, maybe, I don't know what that means, but yeah. Like in my mind, like I, half, of the, half of the women I saw when I grew up did this. So that, that's weird. You don't know what menopause is? No. Okay, so we had this idea of what for the podcast was going to be, and apparently it's like Michal educating Malachi on womanhood. The... Oh, okay. That sounds good. Menopause is when the woman's body stops, produ- like her ovaries stop producing eggs, so she can't get pregnant anymore. Oh, okay. So, In- infertile. I think that any woman going through menopause would slap you with their handbag if you were to say that to them i'm sorry for my ignorance okay no you're right but it's also like a really sensitive time Mm. for women like uh, like the midlife crisis for women yes the cutting your hair short yeah exactly thinning out because your body isn't producing hormones like it used to and you're always hot and you're always upset and again so you're saying that's the fate of every woman being upset Hopefully and will make it the fate of every man too. But what? What? What do you say? What? <laughs> what is the fate <laughs> of every man? Why are we the only ones suffering? Why? I don't know. Men suffer too. We suffer too. Come on. No. We are not allowed to cry. It is true. I feel like I talked about that a lot recently, that I actually like really feel... Someone asked me... Someone... Somebody asked me if uh, if it was hard being a woman, um, if I would rather be a man. Um, wow, that's a I tough said, question. I felt like it was easy for me though. I said, no, being a woman is great. I like being a lady. Mm-hmm. Lady. Lady. Yes. Yeah. And so all there's that no reasoning me. behind this? Well, I said that I feel that men are held to really... Like, if women are held to the standards that society puts on them, to like play a 
particular role to be a specific kind of person. I don't know, maybe a feminist will shoot me for saying this, but men are held to standards to be kind of inhumane. Mm. Like, not to be human, not to be sensitive, not to cry, not to talk about your feelings, not to be vulnerable, to always take initiative, to always, you know, protect aggressively what you feel like is important, to always be right, to protect everybody at all times. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, that's insane. Yep. I don't feel that necessarily all those things are true, but uh, it's like kind of a high ri- high risk, uh, high reward, you know. Most people fall under the high risk, and people mm-hmm. who fall under like most people can't keep up with all of those like society requirements. They end up crying at the night, or they're like shutting down inside. Like, that's what I feel. Not all men are this macho. Uh, personalization that you like that you describe right you can't keep up with society's uh, uh, like requirements of a man so yeah me too you know Not everyone you, do you think you keep up with the requirements of the society of being a woman I think that the requirements that society puts up are stupid so it's good that i don't fit those yeah. requirements like i think it's good that you also don't fit those requirements because the requirements are bad mm. and broken that's right like women should be able to be assertive without being called a bitch and men should be able to uh cry and talk about their feelings without being called a woman and a woman is not a bad thing to be called stop using mm. That as a curse. That's a big one, you know? Like, be a man, not a woman. Like, that's a big, uh, it's a big uh, societal, like, structure, structure in society, yeah? Mm -hmm. Come on, Michal, make it change. I'm working on it. I'm trying to lead by example. Good. Like, uh, I will speak my mind. And I'm not going to talk to people that make me feel like I can't. So what's on your mind, Michal? Kind of... (laughs) Kind of how there's one lady that... (laughs) There's one old lady that I want to give credit to. As a... Speaking of segues, nothing to do with it. But you said, who made me feel that I could uh, be different in my old age, that old ladies could be cool? Well, I want to talk about this old lady that would swim at the YMCA that was so fit. Ooh. Like, she had an insane body by any standard. Really? Like, not, oh, she looks good for an old lady. Like, no, this old lady looked good. Wow. How old was she? I didn't ask because that's rude. <laughs> you couldn't tell because of the body, right? Yes. And she had short hair, and she went to Pilates, and she went to yoga, and she went to swimming, and she went to swimming aerobics. And we met in the hot tub. Sorry, no, in the sauna. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I think I just, like, I... uh... (laughs) I like where this story is going, no? No, why do you like where this story is going? I don't know, it's developing really good. Yes. What did he say to you in the sauna? I... I think I told her that she looked really good and uh, what's her secret? And she laughed and she's like, oh, you're so sweet. I I do everything. I don't have anything else to do. I think she said she was in like her, she didn't say her age. Mm. Mm. I wish she did. That's also a thing. Why can't women say their age? Because then you'll know whether or not they're in menopause. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the... That's the real reason? Like, I asked this question for a long time. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I wish we could ask our fan base. I'm just going to ask the internet. Why don't women like being asked their age? Like, we celebrated one time in the army my commander's birthday. And, like, there is a... There's a song like, how old are you today in Hebrew? 
and like everyone, uh -huh. I started singing and everyone stared at me. What are you doing? How you should never ask a woman what's her age is. <laughs> she was like 35, okay? It's not too bad at all. It's not, no. that's, an age, that's young, you know? And yes. everyone like, oh my God, what are you doing? And I've never heard of it before. Like we celebrate in a birthday. So what is your age? You know, that's the thing we're celebrating. That was so weird. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it, I'm so sorry that you experienced that. Did you it's stare awesome. at me as well? No, I think I would laugh at people getting offended at you. Mm, nice. Like me standing to the side and everyone's like, Malai, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop! And I'm just snickering. Like... <laughs> Okay, according to Google, it is rude to ask a woman her age because women are judged only by what they look like. Mm. Got it. But, there is no but. Like it's going to be offending any anyway, like if, if they fit their age and if they don't fit their age by looks. Um, yeah, if they look older than how they look, then it's insulting for them and like men don't have this problem right like no. older men can be sexy as well right hence the term silver fox hmm, i never heard of it aha a silver fox is a george clooney like character of a man that has a full head of gray hair even though he's brown even though he's brown <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> like his skin color. Oh no, <laughs> Throw yourself out a window mm, fast. It's closed. Sorry. <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. That was awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. So the women and the woman in the sauna. Like what? What were you doing at the YMCA? I swim there. I used to swim there. In Jerusalem? Um, what? Is it in Jerusalem? Yeah. Isn't uh, it like the... Yeah, isn't it like a youth movement? The song... Okay, like in the the organization, Young... Why? Young Christian, Christian Men Association. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like uh, yeah. I was like not like a LGBT <laughs> activist group. I'm not sure. No, it's not. It's Christian. It's very Christian. Um, no, but they have they have gyms. Like uh, the YMCA okay. is also a hotel, and it's also like a gym. Oh really? Wow. In mm -hmm. Jerusalem specifically? No, all over the world. Really? Wow. Yeah, uh, there was one in. Um, there was one in Los Angeles. They called it the Y. Yeah, they <laughs> call it Inca. Um, Were you a part of the youth movement? No, I was not part of the young Christian, young men's... men association. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Are people in Jerusalem uh, keeping the instructions of the lockdown? I don't know. I haven't left the house too much. Don't you have a window? <laughs> okay, I have a very, very small window that's facing a courtyard. Are you in it's... jail? Oh my god. You know, staring out my window right now, I feel like maybe I am. <laughs> oh my god. That because it awful. also has like a bars, like, you know, when they have metal in front of windows so you don't jump out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I okay, I know this picture. It's like, uh, you know, it got like hijacked by the gay community, no? I think I think that was not the first intention of the YMCA. To be a symbol. A gay symbol. For gay Who decided to make it that? I don't know. Like right now you look at it and it's very gay, no? But that's only because that's also not the symbol of the YMCA. Those men. Those men. That's like the that's the video clip of the song. Village people, I think, 
Village People is the band. Oh, really? And the YMCA maybe is the song. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, wait. Village People. Wow, I can't believe this is the, the first LGBTQ one. community also took the rainbow, by the way. They didn't take the rainbow, they adopted it. They adopted the rainbow, but now it's everything is related, you know? That was my favorite color. We had like, uh, how do you call it? Like stuff you painted with, like panda uh, paint of the rainbow, like a big one. And it was really, it was my favorite, uh, like, <laughs> panda. <laughs> and then, and I uh, like, at the age of like, when you start to discover adult stuff, you realize, oh my God. And every, every time you hear gay, it's like in a bad connotation, so. Mm, but the world we lived in when we were younger was so much more judgmental. The rainbow is a great thing. Uh, you think... You, you think can he... still like the rainbow? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not saying you can't, but, you know, once, once everybody knew at a certain age that the rainbow is gay, you could not love the rainbow. That's what I feel. Maybe it's because I grew up in a religious background, society, but uh, like, it's not, it's not unacceptable, but it's like you'll be laughed at, you know? Haha, <laughs> I love the rainbow, he's gay. Your, the kibbutz that you live in is religious? Yeah. I feel it's only like the youth, you know? It's not like everyone will laugh at you, haha, <laughs> you're gay. Like, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just you know. kids are mean. Yeah, it's kids, kids are mean, yeah. Why are kids mean? I have no idea, you know, that's a really good question. Why are kids mean? I think that this is what our podcast should be about. Why are kids... Yeah, look that up, please. Michal, do a favor. Right. I'm on it. Yeah, why kids are mean? Why? Were you a mean kid? No, I was bullied. Really? Oh my god. For what? Um, in high school, it was my ex-boyfriend's mean friends. I think, like, uh, it's a little sad. He, I know. He you can, we being, can change subject if you don't want. If you don't want. It was the bro like uh, gathering group, like mm. you know, like oh, you hurt my bro, so I'm gonna be mean uh. to you. Stupid boy is making me hate biology. Like revenge. Yeah, biology is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But uh, I remained strong and... Did you have your revenge? I didn't even need to take my revenge. Some of them felt really fucking shitty at the end of high school. And they... And I never forgave them. So they have to live it with it for their lives. Mm. That's a good... That's like a revenge. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm out here being my best self. And Jacob Mullen and David Phillips, fuck you guys. Public shaming, I like it. Yanni Papioni, I hate you. <laughs> oh my God. Like, yeah, go get them, go. <laughs> no, I'm so far away from them. I will never, <laughs> I'll never get them. It's okay. I'm sorry that you were bullied, yeah. It's just because you... You like uh, broke up with the bro? Uh, I, th- I think so. I think also because my mom embarrassed him and made him feel really shitty. <laughs> what did you do? Okay, he was threatening to kill himself and say it was my fault because I broke up with him. Oh my God. And my mom was like, yo, this kid is fucking sick. I'm telling the school therapist because this has got to stop. And so he got called in with the school therapist and... Uh, wow. Yes. Oh my God. That's what I... When I said like it's kind of dark, there it is. Yeah. Wow, that got really dark. Really fast. High school is terrible. I feel bad for high schoolers. Like, teenagers... Yes. I don't want to trade places with them ever. hmm Sometimes. Like, I don't know about you, I don't know. Were you a free, open-minded, 
like rebellious, curious teenager that felt like nothing could hold you back? I don't know about nothing can hold me back, but I was the only the only non-religious person in my yeshiva, in my high school yeshiva, yeah. Wow. So maybe I am the free spirit that you're talking about, but uh, I don't know. I, I was not to, not to trying to like make it all about myself, but pe- people are mean, you know, I was the only like uh, left, le- left wing guy which in high school doesn't mean anything because you can't vote, so it's just dumb, but... It's just how you uh, want people to see you. Yeah, but uh, people were mean. Yeah, you know, I feel like uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers are like always like unbaked dough. Like everything changes about you in middle school physically and then you start to forming your personality later and you look awful, you feel awful, you act awful, and that's just it, yeah? So it turns out to be a big drama, like you had in your school. Was there a lot of drama beside that? For me personally or for other people? Uh, You know, in the school, I feel like it's... I was not with girls in school, in high school, but I feel like it's like a... Like a big telenovela. Uh-huh. A telenovela. Uh, yeah, we had. Uh, I apparently had like a special experience being in an American high school where there were football players and there were cheerleaders, and there were big games where cheerleaders would play and like dance for the football players, and there was a prom, and there was like different groups like there were people that liked theater and people that liked skateboarding and people like smoking weed and people that skateboarded and like smoking weed mm-hmm. uh, there was a few it's very uh, like american movie you know i went venice high school which is where they shot the movie greece oh wow so you are <laughs> like truly into the american movie stigma you know American high school movie. Oh my god, I wish I could tell you. No, no, it was not so, but it was. It was so, <laughs> so much. People really, like. So. No, but it was. <laughs> oh, I love it. I had a huge fight with someone that was my best friend in high school in the hallway. It was in the first year, and me and her like stormed in different directions of the hallway, and like our friendship group split. Drama oh number my God. one. Wow, like different factions in school. Okay. Wow. And then. Uh, Did you have a name for the for the group? Fuck, I don't think so. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think so. You know what should have a name? Our podcast. Yeah. Was that a good segue or not? That was such a good segue. It was wow. very artificial, you know? Really, right. I felt like I just flowed. I feel like we just ah. surfed onto it. Body, body surfed. But we can't, we can't it ruin it every time by saying, wow, that was a good segue, you know? We should just let it flow. <laughs> I'm cool, I'm cool, fine. Yeah, I ruined it, sorry. So, <laughs> what is the name? Come on, Michal. We should think about something. Nancy. No, I'm kidding. Flying cookies. <laughs> it's your How did you get face. from flying cookies? No. <laughs> say that again. Sorry. What? what I made say? a dirty joke to myself and I didn't hear what you said. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Wait. I don't have a good name, you know? I, I, I can't think of a good name. We are also M&M. M&M, I thought about it, yeah. M&M Radio. I feel M&M like Moaz Radio. might be a bit offended. Or maybe <laughs> he won't be. Maybe we can... Um, M&M Radio is so cute. M&M is good, yeah. Maybe... Maybe we I... can call it the cat and the cactus. 
<laughs> and the cactus. Oh, that's awful. PC radio. But I also think that what could be very cool is if, let's say I get tired of my doppelganger. I don't want to be a cat anymore. You can change it. Aha, uh-huh. so cat and cactus will be a little bit. Mm, that's, that's right, that's right. The awful, the awful living room design uh, that I made. Are you cats. talking about your living room? Because I don't think it's that awful. No, my living room that I designed, you know, for our characters. Oh, I think I'm going to open it the again. Ging- the Genghis Khan podcast. Genghis, oh my god. And every time we open it, we'll talk something about Genghis Khan. It's like yeah. the icebreaker. <laughs> Did you know Genghis Khan, blah, blah, blah? Say, yeah, we can know. open. That can be like our intro. Every time a random fact about Genghis Khan. I really like this idea. <laughs> mm, that's nice. <laughs> what do you think he looked like? Do you think he was a handsome man? I don't know. We have pictures. like <laughs> No pictures, but like paintings. I think he was a very Asian looking man. Really? I don't know. I don't think he looked apart, you know? Oh my god! I'm looking at the 3D design right now and I see that there's a picture of him in the background. Yes. Didn't you realize it before? No, because I opened it on my very tiny phone, so I didn't yeah. know him. Yes, we have... So he's our idol, you know? Which is a bad thing, but he's on a wall. It's so funny! He's literally behind your head right now as we speak. As we speak, here he is, Genghis Khan, my yeah, man. He himself. <laughs> he was a handsome man, you know? I think I can really? see that he's kind no, of wearing look, a look at a behind. different. Look at a different picture. Like, that, this is not the famous, like, painting. Search for, a, search, search for Genghis Khan. He looks, a... looks very like an old, grumpy man, you know? Oh my god, that's so so funny but he had an earrings and i think that's cool that makes him cool yeah i think so <laughs> i'm sending you the first picture that comes up when i look up genghis khan and you'll do something with it okay yeah <laughs> oh my god it looks like, <laughs> like a moon. oh my god like a right wedding. underneath okay two rows underneath the picture that i sent you comes up a picture of Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Maybe he's, you know, like that uh, 10% of the population is descendant from Genghis Khan. That's what they say, at least. Pedo, Pedo Jeffrey Epstein had a Genghis Khan style obsession with populating the world with his own offspring. Court documents reveal. Wow. <laughs> Got it. Wow. Okay. Amazing. Yikes. Amazing. Everything connects to modern modern times, you know. Genghis Khan lives on. Ooh, wow, that rhyme. That's that's not good, you know. You know, it's not a good person. <laughs> what? Oh, shit. Who's that? That's Genghis Khan. That's the same person? This is okay, I look up Genghis Khan, these are all the pictures that come up. But this one is not Asian. Why do you say that? It looks Persian. You know what? They were very close to being on the same continent. He he did conquer Persia. He did conquer Persia. I ran. I ran. He did not get to the Holy Land. Listen, I truly feel that if I was to do a DNA test, yeah right you should do that you should come come for us with answer okay i see now he's a handsome man right yeah I knew wow. it. Well, either he's a either he's a handsome man or this artist is very talented very threatened by him <laughs> i like the last one that i sent you right Oh my god. Wow. A live reincarnation of That's like wow. the Mongolian Mr. Bean. 
<laughs> How did we get from here to there? No idea. So you should check for next time about your Mongolian descent, that like Mongolian ancestry, if it is true. Um, can you, you do that? I can get a DNA test by then. <laughs> no, don't do it. You'll get corona. Don't put oh, needles. No. Don't put needles in you. You might get something. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> That was fun, Michal. Yeah. But well, actually, we did good. Yeah, it flowed really well. I like it. I don't know how long it's been, but it definitely flowed. It's been an hour. Is this what podcasts are supposed to be like? Just like discussion? I feel like it, yeah. It should be like us talking about whatever comes to our mind. And huh? if we have some topics, we can bring them up. And yeah, that, that's a sign of a, there was no, not a lot of a, like s- awkward silences, you know? So that's a, a good sign. There was no awkward silences. Yeah, that's a good sign. We have a good flow. We have a good high five. High five. Yes. Good flow. We knew it. We yeah, knew we it. Knew it. We knew it. That's what we did. That's why we did it. <laughs> you know, from the moment at the... At Jisser House, when we talked shit about Genghis Khan throwing dead cows at his enemies, when everyone like stopped and looked at us, terrifying, terrified about our subjects. Genghis Khan knowing, bringing people together. Oh no! Don't say that. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's what it did. Okay, for us, yeah. But there are less, there are less fortunate men and women. <laughs> my god <laughs> yeah. yeah so how do you think we should end it I want to talk about the Malaysian turtles that have been saved from extinction yeah maybe that's how we'll end maybe like our thing won't be focused on talking about good things but maybe this is how we'll like open and end mm, I like it Rare turtles known for their permanent smiles saved from extinction in Myanmar. Wow. Yes. Wait, in permanent 19... smile? Yes. I'll send you a picture. Do you think we have, we are that dumb to like, uh, like have a natural affection, empathy towards animals that have a natural smile? I don't think so. I think cows definitely smile and we love to eat them. No, they don't naturally smile though, like dolphins. Like that's the natural, the natural face structure. And we have a, an empathy for them. No? Don't you think? I don't know. Open up this picture of this smiling turtle. I will. Oh my goodness. In the 1990s, they were thought to be extinct. And then oh in 2001, God. it showed up in a pet shop. <laughs> so they've been spending the past years trying to like you know, breed them mm-hmm. and uh, he's so eat. cute. I know. Oh my god, he's so sweet. <laughs> so thanks to the efforts of WCS and the Turtle Survival Alliance, wow. approximately one thousand turtles have been successfully raised into ca- captivity and are soon to be released into the wild. Wow. So it's wow. successful. Right. Very good. They're so cute. Look at that little s- smile. It's also kind of creepy, but I won't go there. It's cute. Okay. I will leave it at cute. We will. I want to be a part of the Turtle Saving Alliance. <laughs> Sounds like a good uh, badge to put on a I resume. Can be an ally, you know. I like the word alliance. It's like very, you're responsible, you're in an alliance, you know. Oh, so yeah. every time I see a, a turtle, I will like, hi, ally. <laughs> Maybe this is why people uh, like being communists. <laughs> what does it have to do with communism? I thought that, hello, uh, comrade. Comrade, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> comrade ally 
Oh, this is a good point. The end. The... Oh God, I'm getting into terrible photos of turtles with terrible, terrible teeth. Jesus, <laughs> how did I get here? How did I get here? Turtle The internet is such a scary place. Wow. It was a nice story. Can we have them in Israel? I Israel like doesn't need... know how to take care of good things with respect. We won't bring any smiling turtles here. Well, we have turtles. They just don't smile because they're here. <laughs> no one smiles. They're grumpy like the citizens, you know? We found <clears throat> every reason, every everything to complain about every time. <laughs> they're really Jewish. Jewish turtles. Jewish. Jewish turtles. Wow. They have natural kippah, you know? They're all religious. You have a natural... The turtles? Yeah, they have like a dome. They're all religious. A dome. Wow. It's kind Sorry, of that was a big one as well. Yeah. Is it not very great? <laughs> I, w- I need to work on them, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay, we're doing our best. Well, Michal, thank you for not making making this not so scary. <gasps> Malachi, thank you for doing this with me. Yeah, we said we're going to do it and we did it. And we did it and it wasn't so bad. Yeah, it was not so bad at all. Let's see what people think. And let's see if it sounds very awful. And So, so excited to see my little pirate cat talking about a <laughs> turtles and the pedophiles. <laughs> okay. Everything is gone.